Welcome to this install demo of IBM Spectrum Protect Plus for Microsoft Office 365 Exchange. We introduced this capability in version 10.15, and it's able to do incremental forever backups based upon the Microsoft Delta queries. And these are going to be stored on local storage that is managed by the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus server. And the retention is also going to be controlled by service level agreements and IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. We can do both scheduled and on-demand backups, as well as restores of all of the Office 365 elements, including mailboxes, contacts, calendars, and OneDrive. And when you go to do a restore, you can either specify a specific version or a given point in time. And this can either be restored to the original account or to another account. So let's go ahead and get started with the demo. To protect an Office 365 application, you have to first register the application with Azure Active Directory and grant the appropriate permissions. So go into your Azure, click on Azure Active Directory. Next, click on App Registration on the left-hand side. And then you'll want to click on the New Registration up on the top bar there. Next, you'll want to give the Office 365 application a name, and this is going to be user-facing name, so make it something that's a little bit meaningful. Currently, we do not support multi-tenant. That'll be a future item, so select single tenant. Go ahead and click register. Next, you'll click on view API permissions, and then click on add a permission. The first permissions we're going to add are going to be Azure Active Directory Graph permissions. So click on Azure Active Directory Graph. Click on Delegated Permissions. And then you can start typing user.read and you'll see below that permission come up. So go ahead and click that and click Add Permissions. Next, click Add Permissions again. Choose Exchange and you're going to choose application permissions. And full access as, click add. We're going to click add permissions again. This time we're going to go for Microsoft Graph. It's going to be an application permission. And the first one we're going to enter in is going to be calendars.read.write. Go ahead and select that below. Next, we are going to choose contacts.readwrite. Select that. Now we're going to select files.readwrite.all. Choose that one. Okay, next do mail.read and then mail.readwrite. And now do user.read.all. Go ahead and click on Add Permissions below. And now you're going to do one more final permission, so click on Add Permission button. And this time we want to go back to the Azure Active Directory graph. This time you're going to choose Application Permissions. And you're going to choose directory.read.all. Go ahead and click Add Permissions. And now at the bottom here, you're going to issue the Grant Admin Consent for this SPP 0365 demo. And you'll notice after this runs and you click Yes, the little yellow warning signs will turn to a green check showing that we have been granted those permissions. Let's go back into Overview. We have the display name, the application client ID, the directory tenant ID. We're going to need all of these in Spectrum Protect Plus. So from your Spectrum Protect Plus user interface, go into Manage Protection, Applications, Office 365, click on Manage Application Server, and then click on Add Application Server. You're going to give the organization name, so we'll call this Company 1. And then you're going to need to copy the tenant ID from the Azure page. So copy and paste that across. And then do the same for the application ID. Copy and paste it from the Azure page. 
Next, create an application secret by going into Azure's Certificates and Secrets, clicking on Plus New Client Secret, giving the secret a description, choosing to have it never expire, and then go ahead and create that. You'll now go ahead and copy that secret key across and paste it into Spectrum Protect Plus's application secret. Next, we need to add a proxy for the backup. This needs to be a Linux server. You'll need to first enter the DNS name or the IP address for that Linux server. And then you'll need to add a user. The user doesn't have to be root, but it does have to have access to sudo. Now on this server, you will have to have installed Java and the libicu. So go ahead and save that and then click OK. Next, we're going to need to run the inventory against this Microsoft Exchange. So go ahead and click Run Inventory. And this will go out and automatically discover this Office 365's organization's accounts and resources. From the dashboard's jobs view, you can see the process is running here, and it should go pretty fast. Okay, once we've discovered all of the accounts and resources, we need to add those to an SLA policy. So let's go ahead and leave the jobs and go back into Office 365. Here you'll see the Office 365 organization. And if you expand that, you'll see the accounts. And if you expand an individual account, you'll see all of the resources. You can choose either to select the organization or you could select the individual accounts underneath it. And then we're going to choose to select an SLA policy. You can use any of our default SLA policies, or if you want, you can choose and create a custom one. So in this case, we created a custom O365 SLA policy. So we're going to choose that. And then we will go ahead and save that. Now you do have the option to either just let the schedule kick off on its own, or if you want to kick it off manually, go into actions and then click start, and this will manually kick off a backup. Now, since this is the first time that this has been backed up, if you go to the home and then you look at the, the jobs view, you'll see that that backup is running. And it will take a little while to run because the first backup is always going to back up all of the data, Additional backups will use the Microsoft API and just back up the changes so we have an incremental forever backup scheme. Oh, check out the next video where I show you how to do additional types of backups as well as restores. Thank you very much.